Well, Papa Tampa is a London-based Congolese and uh, founder of Human Rights Campaign Save the Congo. He now joins us via Skype from London. Hello to you, uh, Vava. Well, we've seen what's happened today with the ICC, former Vice President uh, Pierre Bemba's acquittal. Uh, would you say this is something that you expected? Well, I tell you what, the news wasn't expected at all. Um, but nonetheless, it's a welcome news because at least it shows that the ICC has done justice. What happened to Bemba clearly was the wrong accusation. The ICC after court has showed that Jean-Pierre Bemba, um, the evidence that was submitted by the prosecutor were not good enough um, to uh, convict Jean-Pierre Bemba of the crimes. So it, it is a welcome news, but it shines a light on simply the bureaucracy that is ICC and the millions of dollars that have been spent um, over the past 10 years for, in this trial, only to, to, to find out 10 years later that actually, all along, Jean-Pierre Bemba had been innocent. Well, you say that uh, quite, uh, you know, confidently that uh, he was innocent. Do you not think that uh, in some ways he may have been responsible, whether he was a remote commander or not? Well, I, I, allow me to, to, to contradict myself. When I say innocent, I say innocent in the sense of the evidence that had been uh, produced by the ICC um, Office of the Prosecutions against Jean-Pierre Bemba. Look, the, the facts are really clear on this case that Jean-Pierre Bemba and his militia gang of labor movement, which was organized and supported and trained by Uganda, were responsible for atrocious crimes in Congo as well as in Central Africa. That is irrefutable. Everyone understands and everyone agrees on those points. However, the job of the chief prosecutor of the ICC, the former and the current, is to produce good enough evidence, compelling evidence, so that judges at the ICC could convict John Bemba. The fact that they failed to do so, in, in, in failing to do so, essentially they have let down millions of people, not only in Central Africa, but also in Congo. That shines a light on simply how terrible ISIS has been run. And it's because of the reasons that people like the many Congolese are not calling for the chief prosecutor of the ICC to resign and to step aside. Well, it would seem that victims of these war crimes continue to walk away with no justice um, and leaders n not getting um, convicted. We've seen the countless failures of the ICC, failure to convict President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William. Uh, we've seen how the Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir, um, has also seemed to just uh, gone away um, with, uh, 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 you know, war crimes. What does it say about the credibility of, of the ICC? Humanitarians are crying out. Um, humanitarian activists are crying out. Uh, victims are crying out. Well, I, I, you, you hit the nail on the head, and this is the key element here. That crimes were committed, that those facts are secret, and we know those crimes were committed. We've seen the victim, we've seen the survivors, We've seen uh, traces of those crimes. Now, the job is the job of the chief prosecutor of the ICC to, to investigate those crimes and then to produce good enough evidence, compelling evidence, so that those responsible can be held accountable. But, but there is another point. We need to bear in mind that ICC can be only as stronger as member state, signatory to the Rome Statute, which created the ICC, which means unless and until countries, and this includes countries in the SADC, when crimes are being committed in Congo, when President Kabila, who's refusing to, to leave power, sends his troops in Kasai and kills hundreds of people, thousands of people even, and displaces millions more, and then the SADC doesn't do anything or doesn't, doesn't take any action, substantial action against Mr. Kabila. Those are the issues which are affecting the ISIS and those are the issues which are affecting regions across the world. And so, um, you know, the, the former um, deputy vice president of the DRC will uh, now be reunited with his family in Belgium. Do you see him going back to the DRC? And what do you think uh, is the kind of reaction that he will face should he do so? Well, I mean, 
I wish I could predict the future. I wish I could tell you what's going to happen. I mean, whether or not Mr. Kabila, um, who has essentially imprisoned all the key opposition figures, I'm thinking of Jomin Dungala, Frank Jongo, Muyambu, Jekoko Mulunda, and so on and so forth, whether he would allow Jean-Pierre Bemba to return, that remains to be seen. And if Jean-Pierre Bemba is allowed to return, whether or not he'll be allowed to run, that remains to be seen. But I must put a point forward if I don't expect Press this point, activists across Africa and across the Congo would essentially uh, uh, dis they, they, they disapprove of me. Look, I'm not looking forward to a former warlord becoming the president of my country. So if I had a Maui, and my position on these things has been clear from the onset, what we are pushing for, what we want, is a civilian transition without Mr. Kabila so that we can organize elections that will be free, fair, and transparent. And we want that civilian transition to be led by someone like Denis Mukwege. I'm not, I'm, I'm not entirely comfortable by the idea of a former warlord um, who was supported and created by Uganda becoming the president of my country. Well, Vava, it would seem that there are some limitations within um, the law in the DRC that would certainly uh, dampen any hopes of uh, the former vice president uh, wanting to go into uh, politics or rather um, even seeing himself run for president. But very quickly, let's talk about your campaign. Um, your campaign is pushing for a liberated DRC. Uh, what would you like to see change within the political system and how it is run in that country? The, the, the one single element which we have been pushing, which every Congolese person has met across the world in Congo and also of Congo have been pushing for is free, fair, transparent election. The reason we are pushing so much and the reason we are we are lobbying the South African government so much on this issue and SADC and Botswana so much on this issue because we realize and we understand only a government which is accountable to the people, which essentially depends on popular support of the population that can essentially produce or do things that the population wants. So the key issue here, the key thing, our key demand, in fact, our only demand to the international community and specifically to SADC is to support the Congolese people in their calling, in their pushing for a free, fair and transparent elections. And those elections, as you, as you would have known, had been postponed spawned twice already and we know if they're organized by mr kabila they are not going to be free fair or transparent the reason i say that the reason i say that forcefully essentially is because we are in june elections are supposed to take place in december and as we speak opposition figures are in prison some of them are in exile not allowed to return and as we speak people still not allowed to, to, to take onto the street and demonstrate against the government as we speak a friend of mine luke Pulula, was essentially killed on June 10th in his house. His house was set on fire and he was killed in his house. And I suspect and I believe that the government element are behind this killing. So it's not possible at all under any circumstances to have free and fair elections under Mr. Kabila. It's because of the reasons that we are calling and we are asking the ANC, we are calling on the South African president to SADC, to Botswana, Angola, to support the Congolese people in our calling for a civilian transition without Mr. Kabila, organized live by someone like Denis Mukwege, so that we can organize for the first time since Lumumba elections that would be free, fair, and transparent. That's our only demand. That is the key objective of my life and my priority as we speak. Well, Baba, there's plenty to talk about, but unfortunately we are running out of time. I quickly wanted to ask you about Save the Congo uh, and the work that uh, you've been doing to try and ensure um, that, uh, you know, the people in the DRC um, have a voice, that they are heard, um, and that certainly they have a leader that listens to the people. Tell us about that. I, 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 I couldn't hear your question properly, but the situation in Congo, um, your, your viewer would understand, South Africa would understand, and indeed South Africa has a huge massive uh, population of the Congolese people. The reason a lot 
much to of the Congolese people living in South Africa is because we are running away from a government that has been killing us for the past 10, 15 years. I mean, Congo is this country right in the middle of Africa. It's arguably the most significant country in Africa going forward. You cannot connect um, um, the economy in South Africa in the South with the economy in, in, in North Africa in Egypt if the middle, the center, the heart of Africa is not functioning. And the heart of Africa is Congo. So we, we cannot, if anyone, all of us African, if we care about human rights, we need to care about Congo. If we care about the environment, we need to care about Congo. If we care about women's rights, we need to care about Congo because rape has been used as a weapon of war. And the person, the, 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 the single group of people most responsible for these atrocities in Congo is our very own government. I All mean, right, Kabila but, but is a version of Assad. We are and, out and of and time. We're going to have to Syria. leave this yeah, here. Hopefully, we'll get course. another opportunity uh, to just thrash out some of the issues. And of course, going into those. Uh, uh, elections in the DRC in December, uh, hopefully uh, in uh, uh, upcoming bulletins in the next couple of days as the story unfolds, we'll be able to talk to you some more. Well, for now, uh, we've just uh, been speaking to Vava um, of the Save the Congo, and he was, of course, uh, coming to us live from London.